Hey everyone, it's Tiffany from Let's Get Scrappy and we are going to work on our um, Country Craft Creations Design Team Project tutorial. Uh, so this is a wedding album. It's eight by 10 with a two by 10 um, wash. They just two inch spine. <laughs> and um, I do have a walkthrough on my channel that will be linked below. I'm not sure if this is going to be one video or two videos because I do want it to process very uh, fairly fast. So we might break this up into two videos, but we'll see how we do, um, you know, just how things go. But uh, we are going to go ahead and get started. So you will need your normal things, which would be your scoreboard, your trimmer, your scissors, uh, corner punches, you know, all the things, your wet glue, dry glue, whatever you work with. And then um, you will need two pieces of chipboard that are eight by 10. I have one covered already just to save a little bit of time, not much. And then um, for the spine, we have a piece that is two by 10. And then to cover that, you will need um, a piece that is, or two pieces, 10 by 12. And for the spine, you will need a piece that is four by 12 to cover the spine. Now I will say, like this is a big baby. I, I've mentioned that several times, <laughs> things big. I use 28 sheets of 12 by 12 artisan cardstock is so country craft creations artisan comes 25 in a pack i use 28 so i had to you know dig into another pack um and i only have i have some little scraps left not much um so how I do all my projects is I start with my big cuts first and then what's left on my um, table from my cutoffs is how I decide what I use for matting, flaps, all those things. So I would cut my cover first and then I would cut my base pages next and then use the cutoffs to do the extra flaps on the base pages. So you guys will see that as we go through. Um, but for right now, we're gonna start with the cover I also want to give you a couple more measurements just to have and then you can um, just press pause while you're cutting and come back to this but to cover the inside we're going to need a piece that is six by a little bit less than ten and then for our hinge we are going to do four by a little bit less than nine and a half and then you could see we're going to score at half an inch one one and a half two two and a half, three and three and a half. And then for the top cover, which these were leftover pieces um, after doing my big cuts, um, two that go on top of the cover that are four and a half by 10 and we scored a half inch on the four and a half side. So we're just gonna stop there with the cutting and, and do our cover. So out your big piece now again there's so many different ways to do it we are doing the um, lay flat method by Tamara from country craft creations um, but you can use your where are they um, spacers if you purchase these um, from country craft creations which I will try to remember I have linked um, before videos I just really fast I just do a couple scores to get mine but these are fun to have in your stash especially if you're someone who likes everything really perfect but um, you're just gonna basically just center this on your paper so I don't know why I needed to turn it because I did not need to do that I have score tape on the back of mine because I like to cover my covers with score tape and I'm going to grab a bag real quick to put my garbage in. Okay. I 
have that. Did I tell you guys that I finally, so I had the, you guys saw that I had the craft sale. Then the next weekend I had the garage sale. Um, and then I had to clean up my mess from the garage sale. And I took like, I don't even know, three loads to Goodwill and one load to um, the foster kids for um, the kids that foster out that are getting their own place. And then I was able to turn my son's room. I don't know why I'm getting my glue. I don't need my glue. Um, I'm turning, I turned my son's room into a gym finally. So that is one room down. I gutted it out, turned it into a gym. And yes, I have used it. Not a ton, but I have used it. Each day I've used it a little bit. But I, oh my gosh, like I knew August was going to be crazy, but it's crazy. Every weekend is taken with something. This, um, this weekend, which is like, what is this weekend? The 23rd or something like that. Um, we leave to go to, um, Miami. And then from there, we're going to, um, we're going to spend a couple days there. Then we're going to go on a cruise with my entire family, not just my kids, my immediate with my entire family. Oh my gosh. Oh, and I've told them before I'm never traveling with them again. So we'll see how this goes <laughs> because my family is cray. So it's going to be my sister with her, let's see, three of her four kids, my mom, my stepdad, my brother with his four, meaning his girlfriend and their two kids, and then my four, family-wise, and my daughter's friends. So there's like 15 of us. You guys know, like, that's crazy. But the best part is... When you're on a cruise, that you, there's so much stuff for everybody. Everybody do something. I told everyone, I'm going to do my own thing. Just leave me alone. <laughs> because they fight all the time over stupid stuff. It's like dumb stuff. It's just, yeah. And yes, I will have all my regular germ supplies like I always do. I actually love cruises. And I do clean everything. I do the washi washi all the time. I go in and do my normal clean my own room before we even put our stuff all in it. <laughs> so hopefully nobody gets really sick from anything, but I've, I've been on a whole bunch of them. Never gotten sick because just wash your hands, people. <laughs> That's all you got to do. And if I ever go to like the buffet whatever I get there when it first opens when it's fresh and I get to the, the things that are like made in front of you so that's I am I yep if you go to a country craft creations retreat you will see I will pop up first to get in line for any type of food just because I like to hurry up before everyone else gets their hands on it <laughs> I'm I have no shame I'm no shame here that's just, I've always been like that. Plus, I like to eat, so. You know, it'll be fun. But, like, August is just gone. It's done. And the next two aren't going to be any better. September and October, I have so many, um, like, retreats and just traveling. Yeah, I don't even know. So, I am just mitering my corners leaving about one eighth of an inch there are several tools out there if you like yours to be absolutely perfect but like i said you're gonna cover it with paper always save these though until you're done in case your folds you know you you cut off too much you just never know in worst case scenario just get that black marker out if you see that chipboard poking through and it works i've done it several times I always say there's always a way to fix everything. And I'm just coming through and kind of just working my paper. We always say loosen up the fibers. 
you don't have to do this step. I just, I really feel like covers are really important that they're done right. They're nice and crisp. Not saying mine are all the time. I try though. But again, the more you work the cardstock, the easier it is when it folds over. It's just really, it's just, yeah, you just got to do it. Spend a little time on your covers. So I am going to use some wet adhesive as well. I like to get it on the edge of the chipboard. I feel like, did I turn this light on? Yes, it is on. Okay. And I push it down and over. And if you don't need this part of the video because you know how to do covers, as always, feel free to fast forward. Okay, and we're going to do the other side. Like that, and get our glue. Try not to go off your paper. <laughs> And push it down and over. And I always have to have a good burnish. For those that have watched me for a long time, you know what time it is. Burnish. I, I, I think I'm going to because I'm doing this one, the tutorial in black. So I don't know when I'll be able to do it if I do this. But I think I'm going to... Do this in the Christmas paper from Paper Rose. Um, what is it called? Oh my gosh. Here, I have it right here. Jolly Holiday. So I might do this in this. I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Um, but I will try to remember to link that in the description box as well, along with everything else being used, just in case you do want to um, make a beautiful Christmas album. Because I think this, when the books are this big, these are for really special occasions. So for sure, a baby, Christmas, wedding, it could be like a family ancestry, you know, type of book. But, I mean, I didn't count every spot, but I know this book would hold up to at least 75 large size photos, let alone where you could um, put multiple on one spot. So I just think it would be a really pretty Christmas. But like I said, I don't have time. I still have on Oh, we leave Saturday morning early, so Friday obviously would be for sure packing everything up, but then everyone is coming to stay at my house the night before, so my daughter and her girlfriend and my son, which I'll have to blow up the air mattress because we don't have space for everybody anymore. Um, <laughs> and then uh, my husband's mom is coming because she's going to stay with the dog while we're gone so she'll be here um and yeah so i just have to make sure i have like all her food grocery shopping you gotta have the house clean before you leave and get all my i'm gonna be working on my oh my gosh i'm gonna be working this week on my october so do two of these as i'm yapping away so nice and easy. Um, but I'm gonna this week work on my October, my Country Craft Creations October Retreat Project. And I cannot wait to work with that Prima collection. And if you haven't signed up for that, you're missing out because it's just fun. I cut the wrong paper on this. What did I do? That is the wrong size. Oh, because I thought it was one inch. I first put one. And you, you add three to it. So it really needs to be um, five by 12. 
to kind of do the basic. I'm just going to show you guys how this still works. Even though I didn't cut the right size, I'm still using it. It just gives you a bigger wingspan. But again, you put so much other paper on top of it, it stays. It's all good. <laughs> We're just going with the flow. But if you want to change yours, it would be 5 by 12 or larger. And I'm just centering. But let me just show you if you purchased the, you would put this in your scoreboard. Um but it would go like this, and then you could put this down like so. So that's what these are great for. And even if it's if it's crooked, it doesn't matter. It gets wrapped around it anyways. I learned a long time ago to just keep going. Don't focus on it. I would never get done with a project if I did that. So again, we're going to do the same thing. Just bend around all of the sides. And you could reverse, which makes me feel like I'm bending back a fingernail. Ooh, and don't look at my fingernails because, ooh, I'm, I'm holding out because my nail appointment isn't for another four days. Because, you know, it has to be like has to be nice for the cruise so I went a little longer than I normally would but that's okay Ooh, I hate it when I do that because <laughs> then it leaves it. can you guys see this weird mark yeah that little shine part and that doesn't go away I mean it gets covered up with paper but in the meantime I see it and it drives me crazy Okay, so again, I'm just loosening up those fibers so it's easy to do. Let's see, what style is Tiffany going to do today? Because I'm always changing up how I do this. We're just going to go with this regular one. <laughs> I'm always changing it up. I just, whatever's speaking to me in that moment. Okay, so I'm going to add some glue against the chipboard here okay and push it down and push it over squeeze it out pushing it down and over oh i got a cough excuse me oh it. Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry. Let me get some water. Okay. No, my throat is still scratchy. Scratchy. So just give it a good burnish. Make sure it's all good. And this is where, if it's gonna crack, it'll be right there where my paper overlaps. I know that part. And down over. But it is going to be fun to go on vacation. I cannot wait. And of course to get some sunshine with my white self. I, uh, during the garage sale, of course I wasn't paying attention. Why would I? I had a tent up and I just wasn't paying attention and I was out in the sun acting like I'm not as white as can be. And of course I was burnt later. You would think I would know by now at 50. Most of the time I'm pretty good. <laughs> I just, you know, wasn't thinking. Not at all. Okay, now we're gonna miter our corner. So scissors up against your chipboard, flat, just miter 
slightly. You can go a little bit deeper if you want to. Same thing over here. I don't like to go really deep because sometimes here when you put your other part on, it's there's a little gap. So I just do a slight little miter. Clean up as we go. Okay, so I'm going to add my square tape and I don't want that one. Let's see where my quarter inch is. Let me grab that. Why do I have all three eighths over here? All of them. All right. So I like to do the score tape plus the glue. So I leave about an eighth of an inch from here to the chipboard and do it again down here. And then the rest will just be wet adhesive. And the more you do these, you'll find what preference you like because the designers, well, I think a lot of us now kind of do the same thing. Um, yeah, I just, I've never liked all glue. And I don't like going up to the edge. Sometimes I'll put my chipboards together. Sometimes I won't. This is how we're doing today's project. I'm going to add a little bit of glue. Oh, and it should, you should always dry fit first. I always forget to mention that. So let's just see before I touch the thing. Okay, yeah, so we're a good size. And at this point, even if it's not, you're not going to make another one. Just adjust it to where at least whatever is going to be your bottom is nice and level and flat. Because otherwise, if you want to stand up your book, you won't be able to. Okay. So we have a few seconds to get that on there, literally with our glitter glue. And I'm just making sure it's together. I think I need my other mat. I feel like you guys can't really see, well maybe I can't see on this blue mat. So see how even though this piece was shorter, it still works. I'm not wasting paper. Normally you would want it to come out just a little bit more. Okay, so we have that one done. Now we're gonna do this side. Let's check our little books. Okay, I am, I'm, I'm gonna switch. And I've not cleaned this one. But we're going to use this one. Let's see how this does. Okay. I don't know. I feel like on that one, when it's black, you can't really see things. I don't know why, but that's probably just me. Oh, and by the way... So, you know, all of July I celebrated my birthday and stuff just keeps coming. Um, <laughs> but we'll be celebrating it on the cruise, too, because my sister, since I didn't want to go anywhere or do anything, she's like, well, then we're doing it on the cruise. So, yeah, I guess we're going into August now. Just going to keep celebrating that birthday. <laughs> down and give it a good burnish hurry before that glue dries I can hear a little bit of the snap crackle pop which means this art glitter glue when it does that wasn't wet enough and it you know dried before it went down there we go love it when these come out nice 
So there is our cover. Now we're gonna get our piece to cover the middle, which was six by a little bit less than 10 inches, but still do a dry fit to make sure you don't go, you know, off of the book. And I did put some score tape on the back. You can do wet adhesive. Again, I just, I like my score tape when doing the cover. Sometimes if I didn't prepare, do my homework, I'll just use my wet adhesive. But I knew this video was going to be a long one, so I wanted to save a little bit of time. So I'm still going to put some wet adhesive here just to give it a little bit. Okay, and then just put that down. There we go. And I want to hurry because again, that wet glue is going to dry. But you have to burnish this baby. This is where you take your time and burnish. That was really messy, Tiffany. <laughs> and see, the glue is coming out, which is fine because that just means it went to the top and the bottom. some dry adhesive as well don't push too hard if you're new to making mini albums don't push hard in here I'm just it looks like I'm doing it hard but I'm not I'm just kind of forming the paper um, in the creases and now give that a little bend that looks good Okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, let me see. Just check in. Okay, so that works. And we're nice and sealed up. Okay, so next is I'm going to show you how to do the hinge. Hmm. This is always tricky because I want to use, okay, we're just gonna do it. I'll put it down and then I can do my my um, decorative paper a different way when the time comes. Okay, so we're gonna grab this piece, get my scoreboard. That is four by nine and a half. Again, here are the measurements. I'm gonna turn mine over. I want the writing on the back side. So half inch, one, one and a half, two. I know I'm not all the way in frame, but let me see if I can come up a little bit. There we go. Two and a half, three, and three and a half. So that's our score for the hinge. And to me, the easiest way to do to find out how big should mine be obviously um oh hold hold what did we say this was do we, we didn't do 10 did we oh yeah this is right because <laughs> it depends if your pages are the size of your project then like you know our album base is 10 inches but our pages are going to be nine and a half so i know that i know my height the width i always do um, I give, it depends upon how many pages you want, but we're doing three pages times one inch. So that's three inches. Plus we have, um, a half inch gusset in between. So that's two half inch. So that's four. So that's, I don't know if that made sense to you guys, but that's how I figure out my hinges really fast is I just know however many pages I'm doing. That is one inch per page 
and then depending upon the size of your gusset. So now we are going to get to our score tape that is stuck. Okay, so on the back, oh, and we do want to shave off a little bit on the ends here. I'm gonna grab my little cutter. I don't even know if it's big enough, but we're going to try it and see. We come off a little bit. Yes, we do. I'll do my big cutter. We're just going to take off like a sixteenth of an inch on each end. So that way, there's no chance of it impeding when you go... <laughs> Um, to lay your, your hinge down. And if it doesn't make sense right now, that's okay. Just do as I say. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to do my score tape. Ooh, that was really crooked. Ooh, that was a terrible job, Tiffany. Hopefully I didn't do... Well, you can't do it too bad. But yeah, I was I guess I was not paying attention as I was cutting. Did you guys see that? Cause that's boo boo. Okay, so I, I just like to do my ends and then from here we're gonna skip one. I'm gonna put this on. Next one, you don't have to put like dry adhesive here. You could wait until it's folded up and then put wet adhesive and then put another one down next to that. And then we're going to skip one. And put one right there and we are done. It looks weird only because we have the ends done and then we need to give it a good burnish okay and before I have it all glued I'm going to fold all my creases Fold a folder. And you can fold all of them. It doesn't really matter which way they're going yet. But it's just like a hill valley type of situation that we're going to be doing here. to say but it's gonna look like that when we're all done so just trust the process I'm gonna take off the outer I'm gonna put a little bit of wet adhesive in there fold that over Okay, so we have that one. Then we are gonna take off, so you have a tape here, you're gonna leave that, take off the next one. A little bit of adhesive. And put those two together, like so. Bend that down to the flat surface. Now we're going to do our last one. See, it takes forever just to do the cover. I mean, I know I talk a lot, but I do work and talk at the same time. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Get this little nubbin off. Fold that over. Give it a good burnish. Put 
There is a little bit of this collection left. My Country Craft Creations. I'm not sure. I thought she said she was going to order more, but I'm not positive. But hopefully, like I said, always if you see something that I get that you like, I don't know when I'm going to ever get to these things, but it's always good just to get it so you have it on hand because eventually I get to the stuff. I'm just looking right now because I feel like I have a crooked. Let's see. This one is a little off. Hold, please. Maybe that's why it looked like it was so off when I cut it. The gusset is the same. I'm just going to kind of force it to come down a little bit. There we go. Much better. Okay, so now we have that. And you could put a wet adhesive down or score tape. I do like to have score tape on mine. And I do wet adhesive too. But I just like it to have like an initial grab. So I like to put my score tape at the very top so none of it will be showing down below. Not that, you know, you have a lot of room for it to show, but. So I put it on both sides. Then we could put this in the book. And I'm thinking maybe at an hour, I'll stop the video and do a part two. Just because sometimes when you go over an hour, the videos can take forever to process. It all just depends. You just never know. And I want you guys to be able to start this tutorial as soon as possible. So, have that. It actually, I mean, it looks really hard because there's a lot of stuff going on, but it actually is a fairly easy album. At least I think. You guys let me know. And I'll give some suggestions for, you know, even easier things. So I'm just burnishing all of these down. So your hinge, that's not a very good, let's see, is this better? Not really. But your hinge will look like this. And let's put it in the book, but let's do some dry fitting first. And I have to do this way because that white upside down is gonna drive me crazy. So this is where you can come in and you could do tick marks and make sure everything's good. I don't do that, so. <laughs> and sometimes it's not good, but that's okay. I'll just take off these two middle pieces of score tape and then add a little bit of wet adhesive. I did not like the glue on my thumb. And again, this it's, gives it just a little wiggle room, but also you don't have to, you know, wait for the glue to totally dry. Oh, and I was gonna come this way a little bit. So I'm going to my left just a little bit. And I'll remind you guys why here in just a second. It's a little crooked, but we'll survive. It's all good. Let's get that in there. I need to take my airborne tonight. I do not want to get sick before I go. I don't want to get sick at all, but 
definitely not before you go. Let's see. That will be a little bit crooked. Okay, but I'm leaving a bigger gap here because I did increase, if you did not see the walkthrough yet, I increased this size of this flap over here to a half inch versus the quarter inch that it was before. So I wanna make sure I have a good clearance. So it's a little bit bigger than a half inch over here. So I don't have it exactly centered, but once you have everything together, you would never know. Okay, so now let's do the outside with those two pages that we had. So the four and a half by 10, and then you just score at a half inch on the four and a half side. I'm not gonna get my scoreboard out for that because I think that's pretty easy. Just mitering the corners. I need to clean my tools. They haven't been cleaned in a minute. My scissors have sticky stuff. Okay, so let's get these. And this is it for the front. You can add whatever photo mats in here. Oopsie. Okay. And let's do a little test drive right here. Okay, yes, that fits good. You want it to be a little bit smaller versus bigger, so it's okay. If it is a little bit smaller, just center it on that. And let's just get a little bit. Okay. And we're gonna come in, and I'm just taking it all the way to the edge of the book but also making sure I'm like straight up here straight here oh, looks good and then I'll come in and burnish and we'll do this for a magnet I'll go like that and then there'll be one on here and one on this side just to remind ourselves to put a magnet down okay so here let me get this nice and crispy over here okay so before I put this one on, I do like to, again, do a dry fit. And you could paper clip, clothespin, whatever's easiest, this flap down. But I'm putting mine on just to see, because you don't sometimes, again, with our scoring and our cutting, it changes the size of our paper of what we intended it to be. So you just wanna look to make sure you do still have your gatefold. I'm fine with like a little bit of space. If it is, I don't mind that. I just don't want it to be overlapping. So I think it looks good. And just a little bit of wet adhesive. Okay, and again, just corner to corner, eyeballing, because you do want to make sure they are lined up. That's important too. And yes, come in just a little bit. I see. Okay, that looks good. We have a little bit of gap on this one, but I'm fine with that. Nice burnish. And then bend it back over and burnish again. I'm just going to take this for the moment. 
We're gonna have to put our belly band down in a second, but just to hold it for a second to glue itself together. Okay, so next we are gonna do, um, let me just give you guys real quick, just so you know, I'll still go through it as we're doing the pages, but you will have um, 12 six by 12s throughout this whole book. So if you wanna just cut those, you can now. Um, and then you'll have four, four and a quarter by six and a quarter photo, photo mats, two five by seven photo mats, and then two five and a quarter by seven and a quarter. I know, I just did random weird sizes, just whatever. <laughs> whatever, whatever. Okay, so let's do, no, we're actually gonna do the base pages. Let's, cause if anything, if I stop the video, I want our base pages done. Okay, so here, let me show you guys. Okay, we need three pieces that are seven by 10 and a half. And then on the scoreboard, we're gonna score at a half inch and at 10. So, and let me just get the scoreboard out because I need to show you guys the other stuff. So you're gonna do that for all three. This is for the three pages. So half inch and 10. Then these are the same sizes, but there's different scoring on these. So you will have three pieces that are nine and a half by 12, but for page one and page three, we're gonna score at seven inches. So seven inches. For page two, you're gonna score at two and a half and nine and a half, just because I wanted to be weird. Like that. And page three is the same as page one, score at seven. And then we're gonna make our pocket page. So put that away. Now come in and just fold on all these score lines. That's gonna be for page one. other one like that okay now we're gonna stick these to our oh let me do this one so let's miter these I'm gonna put some score tape on these here if I can where did I go I keep moving it You could do your wet glue. And this side. Burnish that, and then we're gonna miter the corners. together Hold. Okay, so you have three of these now, and you're just gonna stick two, these two together. And again, I'm just checking 
doing a little dry fit like this one because there's folds on these other ones this one's a little taller but i'm just gonna center them i think let me see how big it, the difference is or i might just trim it nope good maybe no i'll probably trim it because i'm cray cray <laughs> oh yes i'll do that sure at the top I'm good and on the fold over here is lined up for sure in case you need to trim off you want it to be on that the cut edge because you can't trim on a fold so we're gonna put together the three bases of the pages then we're gonna add our flips and flaps to each of them afterwards if you guys are wondering what are we doing Am I in frame down there? Oh, good. Yes, I am. Make sure they're still nice and flat. There we go. And burnish. Okay, so just remember that this is page one. And I'm just looking for where I need to trim it a little bit. Just be careful because you don't want to cut that fold. Can't see, but I think it's good enough. No, a little bit right there. Okay, stop, let's do it. There we go. So this is page one. So I'm just going to do this so I know. That's the back of page one, actually. So page one is here. That's flip. page two. Oh, which one was which? How can I just tell you guys? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. So one and three right now are the same. They won't be. And three is like, there's like only three other pieces we put with it. It's so easy. Okay, so I was just looking to see which way it was going. Okay, again, making sure my folded side really matches up. That looks good. almost at our hour mark so that's good if we have just like the base of the pages might do like hour and 15 okay and then get this over and just make sure again that the folded side does line up burnish I do have to trim a little. So this is what I'm talking about, how because this piece got scored and folded on each end, it's now the measurement is off a little bit from what the other side that has no folds, top to bottom. So you have to just do a little, little trimming. Like it's really a sliver, a sliver of a sliver. I hope you guys like this project. I did go a little cray cray on it, but it, it was fun overall. Okay, so this is page three. Now, page two, I don't know why I just, whatever I grabbed is how we went. <laughs> why not be all over the place? So this one's gonna be a little bit harder because um, luckily, it matches up, but because it's folds on both sides, you definitely want to do a dry fit on this one because there will be folds on all four sides. So, we're good there. Okay. 
that one down. And let's pick this one up. force it to not be. There we go. So sometimes you could just kind of re-force the fold. <laughs> That's not like actual English, but you know. There we go. So that is now page two. And now I think, because we're almost at the one, but I think we can get these put in. Hmm. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. So we have page one over here. So page one is going like that, page two with the gate folds, and then page three is flat with the flap on the back. But let's yeah let's just get it in there let's just do it and I should have mitered my corners and I didn't so let's see if this actually fits because it is kind of tight so you guys will see how you can miter the corners afterwards <laughs> I can get it on there I just don't want to force it so I'm just going to miter these right now so do this before you put it in that will make sure that it fits and, and again it's probably because of the way we did the pocket again with the scoring change the measurement just slightly So I just took those little corners off. Let's do a dry fit again. That one's good. Let's check page two. You wanna do this before you get your wet adhesive on there and get things all stuck. So right now this is stuck on something. What are you stuck on? Well, I don't think it was actually in the hole. Okay. We keep getting stuck on. There we go. Goodness gracious. good there okay so let's go ahead we are gonna put some wet adhesive on here I do try not to go all the way down to the bottom with my page Goodness, this is so hard. Do I miss standing up? So I'm just going to kind of slide it on there, pull it back up a little bit, and try to see what I'm doing and stick it down. Again, if the glue comes out, that's okay. Okay, other side, just check it and just keep burnishing.
What is that? Looks like it's dried already. Why is that white? That's weird. Okay, we'll just keep going. <laughs> now let's do page two. Same way. And we are now at an hour. But, you know, I got, I got a good amount done. And the gatefold, so see this is flat on the front. The gatefolds are on the front of page two. I always open up my pockets. Because it's supposed to help me slide these things on better. There we go. Bend it in place, kind of check placement before you burnish it. Get in there. Fit on the back. And you have a nice, good seal. Now we'll do page one. do this side for some reason at this angle okay and then we need the flap to be down let me go to put this on again we're kind of sliding it in place I'm lining up with my other pages before I burnish Pushing that on there, give it a burnish. I think I have, I think it's white ink from the bottom showing on both those sides, but that's okay. We'll take a little marker. I'm telling you, markers are your friends. They hide a lot of stuff. Okay. So we have our base pages down now. So before we keep going, let's do the belly band over here. So I'm going to give you guys a few more measurements. I'm just trying to find where I put my pen. Why do I don't have all these things out? Oh, it's over here. And I just ripped my page. Okay. So I'm going to give you some measurements here. So for, and you don't have to do all the photo mats that I, you know, did do. Again, if you want to save paper that way too, you can. You don't have to do all the photo mats or you could do more. There's way more room. So for this side, these are all cutoffs that were left on my table. So um, you have a piece that is four by 12. And just again, because I was lazy and didn't want to cut, I just scored at one inch and 11 and had just a bigger hinge to fold <laughs> and same thing with this belly band because we have a double belly band so this is 2 by 12 and we're going to score at 1 inch and 11 then we have um, our little booklet here is 10 and a half by 7 and a quarter and then score at 5 and a quarter and you just fold that in half basically that's all that is right there and then a large photo mat that is six and a half by eight and a half and I did use my corner punchers from um, country craft creations these are the we are memory keepers um, three-way punches you don't have to do this part either but I did use lots of punches that I got from country craft creations so you have that Set that aside for a second. 
And we're gonna miter these corners, these big corners. I'm telling I was like, why am I cutting that just to have little scraps? This probably makes it even sturdier to have a longer hinge. Okay, get that off of there. So the front is really easy. And then you have another one. Again, these were scraps. So I was like, okay, what could I do with all these little skinny things? And that's how I came up with, okay, I'll make it a double belly band. So we're just gonna glue these all down and center it. So we'll do the big one first, or you can glue them off the book and then put them on combined. And I do like to just do one at a time as far as the hinges. So I'm gonna do the top. I don't know why I moved that up so high. And I'm just eyeballing, you can measure if you want the exact center and dry fit down here just feeling to make sure because sometimes it's hard to see with the black I don't want to go above my book burnish that down really good now when I do this you can take your paper that you're gonna mat with and slide it in now, like get the glue on it, tape on it, whatever, and put it in and then bring it all down at once. I did do mine like that. Or you could just put this together and slide your paper in. I've done that. And I've done that in many tutorials. So hopefully you guys know what I mean by that, but we're just gonna put this one down. And it's really important that you have a good fit, especially around the covers. So nice, good burnish. Now put your other piece on. And center it. And you could do just one belly band if you want to, or no belly band. Again, if you want a simpler project and not so many uh, interactive moments. You can add way more um, little booklets and flaps than I did. So now you take your photo mat. It slides better when you actually have paper co covering up all the seams. And I'm just making sure we're not stuck together anywhere down in there, which we are not. And you have your little booklet and we're done with that. Now for the pages. Hmm. We're at one one ten. Okay, we're gonna do. I guess we're just gonna let's just keep going. We'll see how far we get. Okay, so for page one, front and back, I'm giving you guys the measurements as we like do the pages. It'll just be easier. So for the front of page one, we are gonna have a piece that is. 5 by 12 and we're going to score it together in just a second. So we're going to score it a half inch and at 5 and then we're going to turn it and score at 9 and a half. 
what did I just say? Half, oh, a half inch only, not on F5. I was like, wait a second, what kind of scoring is that? And then on the front of that, this is the little flip up, um, three and a quarter by eight and a half, and then we're gonna score at four and a quarter. This is a little scrap for our tag, two and a half by five that I waited till the very end to do all my tags and stuff. And then the inside tag is three and a half by seven and a half. On the back, these are three of the six by 12s that I told you you will need. So one of them is gonna get scored at six and we'll do the other two together. So just hold tight for that. But here's just if you were taking pictures, I did A, B, C, so you know that these all go together. This is for our stadium pop-up. And then we have a large tag in the back of that that is four and a half by seven and a half. So let's score these real quick together. So, um, what are we doing? This one. Okay, we're gonna score it a half inch. I am going to. Oh my God, I hate it when my writing's upside down. That's why I was contemplating what I was gonna do. So a half inch. Then we are gonna turn to this side with the 12 inches going across, and we're gonna score at the nine and a half, like so. Then let's take this piece. We are gonna score at four and a quarter. That's for the front. Now for the stadium. So this piece, we're gonna put that in there. This is one of the three. Score at six inches. Set that aside. Two of the three. They're gonna score at four, six, and eight. And we'll see if this actually works. I haven't played with it since I made it, so I don't know. We'll see. And then the last one is two, four, six, eight, and ten. No joke. I I should have probably practiced this a little bit. And I'm trying to see if I even have my sample. I did have a sample somewhere. Hmm, we'll find out. We're just gonna do it together. And let me hit some more lights as we're going. Okay, so now this piece is going to, we're gonna fold it, because this is going to be a flap on our page one. So you have that and you have this. So flip. One goes to the back, and then this goes up. Doesn't matter which way, but that's how it's gonna be. And let me just see if, I think I cut off the little, little ditty. Yes, so we're making this flap right now. Oh my God, this thing's so heavy. Whew. So we're gonna cut off this piece right here. So just cut this off. And go a little bit to the left of the left of the score line. Just a smidgen. And miter that. Miter this one. Like so. Okay, so now we have a piece that looks like this that we're gonna put on page one. Put the dry fit first. Make sure everything matches up. And I think I need, I'm going to redo it. I think I need, oh, nope, 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 nope. Fold it in that way. And now we need to take a little bit off of this side, I think. Oh no, it's fine. Okay, so it should look like this because the pocket's gonna be on the inside. This will be just flat with nothing on it. So I'm just checking to make sure. I do wanna grab a piece of white 
just so you guys can see while I'm working with the black. This off white piece here. Hopefully that helps a little bit better. So we have our little our little door. You're going to glue this down. It's another reason why I like to use score tape because it for sure gets up in the corners for a nice good seal. So then I feel like I gotta do that. Cause I don't like it when my corners pop up. Okay, so corner to corner, check your top and bottom, and you have seconds to get it all down there. You don't want that to, okay, there we go. Now burnish. And we are good. So this is going to be a pocket. You're going to just put glue on these two sides. You can add a hinge if you want to. And then for the tag, I just punched the bottom and then had our little fancy angle punch. I love having these. I like having all the punches. These are great for like traveling and lightweight projects. The chompers are better for if you have to do multiple like layers. So that is gonna go in like that. I'm just gonna stick that closed a little bit, maybe. So that is there, and I did do a magnet on this one too. Just right there. And you have your magnet. So let's just close this up for a second. Now turn to the back and let's set this aside. Get those three pieces that we talked about for a stadium pop up. And we're gonna see if this works. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so fold this first one in half basically, like so. This is our, now if you don't wanna do the stadium or you feel like you, you know it's too difficult, that's fine too. You could just do this as a, fl a flip up. So you don't have to do this extra. Like one piece really is like wasted paper, but it just was fun to do something different. So um, you have your next pieces. So this is the one where we scored at four, six, and eight. So I just do, I just do in half first. Like that. And then fold that back. I'm probably going to have to look at the book here in a second to make sure I am folding in the right direction because there does have to be a certain direction for these. There we go. So right now we have this piece looks like that. And then where is our handy dandy book? So we're going to fold this in half and I just kind of just zigzag going back and forth, but I like it to line up. So I'll do my other side and making sure. Now fold these two back. And 
you don't have to do it like this. You could just do an actual accordion. Like this just looks like a fan. This just helps me be able to make sure everything is lined up. Okay. So this is just a accordion. That's the noise you have to make when you do it. So this one has the hill up. I'm just going to test it here for a second. This is what it will look like, believe it or not. We're just going to glue these two ends to this one here. So let's do where we could put it. Let's put it in. Okay, take this one first. Sorry. And we're going to glue this to the, the um, like flip up part. At least I think so. We'll soon find out if this works or not. Tiffany's bloopers. Again, I'm just doing one end. I'm gonna match up my corners. Okay. Burnish. I need to go get a serious spray tan or something before I go. Whew. Try to give me a fake base. <laughs> okay, now I'll get our adhesive on the back of this one. So it's on the big part. And the middle does not get glued down. All I do is like see now, because there's now so many tutorials on different ways to make cards. I just look at those and see those as like interactive things that can go in in albums and folios. So that's all this is, is this was a card that I saw somewhere. I changed the measurements up a little bit for this project, but the inspiration came from watching somebody make a card. And I cannot remember, I only follow two card makers. But I could not find if that's where I got this from. Okay. So, there is that. Is that working so far? It's working because it still should lay flat. And you can, like, glue it. Like, you can put it out flat. And, you know, just to make sure. I, I don't know what I just said. Just, just keep going. Just keep going oh my gosh so same thing just put adhesive on the two ends and I did little squares for the matting but it could be leaving you know you could do the whole chunk if you want to which on this one I would probably have to do because I have all that white showing now. The writing, I should have put that on the back side. Ya goober. Okay. And I'm just gonna test it out to make sure we still lay flat. I'm gonna stop at an hour and 30, I think. <laughs> I just don't want it to be more than two hours. Okay, so lay this out. Burnish, and then your tag just fits in behind this when we glue it down on three sides, which I'm going to put mine down temporarily because before you glue this down, you do want to put your pattern paper. So that you definitely want to do. Okay, now you want to get this back into shape. So it should like this here. I'm just going to kind of get everything burnished back. Back where it's supposed to be. 
like so. And I did do a ribbon closure. So I put my ribbon there and my ribbon on the actual page. And, and the more you play with this, the better. I think I'm going to do more like this. So ribbon. Um, just again, the more flexible it is, but it's just with something fun. I think you have to have that middle piece so it doesn't like, you know, uh, flop down. But here is our tag. Again, I'm going to use my punches. I like to round my corners at the bottom of my tags or like large inserts just so they don't get dog-eared. And let's see if I could temporarily put this in the book. Love this thing. Love it, love it, love it. And you could put, I have mine down a little too low. I'll show you guys in just a second. Once I got it on there and tied it, I wish I had, you know, um, moved it up a little bit higher. Okay. And then you're just going to put your tag in there. Like so. Let me show you. So mine because you're tying right here i wish there was a little bit more room so i would have went up like about another inch or even half an inch would have been would have been good because like this is about a half an inch more than the other one okay so there is page one we're at 130 basically okay so i think i'm going to pause so we can finish the other video Oh, and I didn't finish the front. Reverse, reverse. Okay, hold on. So on the front, we have another tag. Because <laughs> why not add tags when you have scraps? And a little. We just fold this in half. Or try to. And then we'll stop here and start up with page two and the rest. So this just goes right here. And add your little tag in there like that. And then we'll come back and start with page two. And it is, I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's still more to do, but it's still fairly easy. All easy stuff. Okay, so I will see you guys in the part two video of the tutorial. Okay, make sure, hop on over. It'll be linked below. <laughs> All right, bye.